So, at first glance, these two iPhones in front of me, they look to be exactly the same, right? I mean, iPhone 7s, matte black finish. For the most part, they are, or are they? Hmm, okay fine, they're a little bit different. This one over here is a 256 gigabyte model. This one over here is a 32 gigabyte model. Now, when you walk into the store and you decide which version you're gonna purchase, you think the 32 gigabyte model is cheaper. I just wanna get in at the cheapest price point because I don't need all that much storage, but the story's a little bit deeper than that. Apple might not be giving you the whole picture here. Turns out that the 32 gigabyte model might be substantially slower than the larger capacity models. Not all storage is created equal, not all of it is the same speed. And what happened here, Apple probably went a little bit chintzier on the lower capacity models in terms of the quality or caliber of storage, hence, a speed difference. Now I'm gonna test this out today to open your eyes. So this one on the left over here, capacity 248.8 gigabytes. Of course, that's the formatted size. That makes this one the 256 gigabyte model. 27.85 gigabytes, that makes this the formatted size of the 32 gigabyte model. You can see there. I've got something on here called performance test from your CPU to your memory to your storage, which is the thing we're interested in today. If I tap on storage write speed, you can see 359 megabytes per second. The read speed, 851 megabytes per second. Now over on the right here, let's go ahead and hit the storage right. You can already see how much slower that was just by watching the bar move along. That's 42.4 megabytes per second. The read is not such a big deal, right? The less expensive SSDs almost always get hit in the write performance. This read speed is in the same neighborhood as the 256 gigabyte model, but the write speed, holy smokes. You're talking about almost 10 times faster write speeds on the larger capacity iPhone 7. Let me paint a picture. I've got a laptop over here. This laptop has some movies on it some movies and iTunes, Star Wars being one of them. Never mind the synthetic benchmark, let's transfer it over like any normal user would do. So let's kick it off the 256 gigabyte. I'm gonna plug it in, I'm gonna begin to transfer and we're gonna time it. Nothing else is syncing on this iTunes besides this movie file for comparison. It's a 4.2 gigabyte 1080p video file, Star Wars, A New Hope. I'm gonna use another device just for the purpose of having a clock running three two one okay two minutes 34 seconds around two and a half minutes for a 4.2 gigabyte file let's eject this device and replace it with the 32 gigabyte model select star wars and new hope 4.2 gigabytes in three two one now keep an eye on this one, guys. There we go. Three minutes and 40 seconds. The evidence is there. So the bar finish, and I bet if you walked into an Apple store and you asked the employee what was the difference between the 32 gigabyte model and the 256 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte model, they would tell you, oh, sir, ma'am, miss, it's just the amount of stuff you can store on there. Not exactly true. If you're a media head, you're constantly transferring large files, pictures, videos. There's all types of scenarios where having a slower write speed on your device could affect performance, as you've just seen. I don't think it's worth the performance hit considering the savings. It would be nice, though, if Apple was a little bit more transparent about that performance difference. I don't think you'll find people saying it in the Apple store, so that's why I'm doing it for you.